Keys and 859, oh, 9 o'clock at CHHA, 1610 AM. And uh, tonight I have uh, Mandy Goodhandy, also known as Amanda Taylor, in studio. She's Canada's first trans woman stand up comedian and was the first trans woman vocalist to be accepted into the Toronto Jazz Festival in 2016. Uh, she's in studio tonight with guitarist uh, Steve John Dale, and we'll be enjoying great live music, good laughs, and some serious uh, talk. Welcome to A Drink of Water, Mandy. Thank you very much, Joyce. It's wonderful having you. And you know, I'll tell you, when I met, I met you only a, a little time ago, back on Sunday, last Sunday, when you were having your uh, your third anniversary at the 120 Diner, and I want to just say that, uh, Mandy, you are uh, the owner of a nightclub down here in Toronto, 120 Diner with Todd uh, Clink. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, mm-hmm. and it was formerly Good Handy's nightclub. Yeah, the upstairs, uh, which is now Club 120, was formerly Good Handy's. Downstairs is 120 Diner, the rest. That's right. So you combined forces with Todd there, and uh, mm-hmm. you got a three-year run. That's really great. And uh, you also you have a lot of uh, wonderful acts that go through there, uh, singers and comedians. And uh, so uh, upstairs is comedy, is it not? Upstairs is a lot of big dance um, events, and it's a, a big variety of different parties that are put upstairs. Oh, great. And, um, okay, that's that's wonderful. And anyone who wants to go down there, that's a, that's a great fun place to go and uh i i certainly have enjoyed a lot of good times there as well and i when i met you last um last week sunday you know i uh ori dagan said to me he sort of nudged me and said you should you, you know joyce has a radio program you know mandy you should go on it and i thought well yeah she's got a great story and i and i'd heard you sing moon river because you are a wonderful singer mm-hmm. as well as a comedian and um I thought you'd done such a lovely rendition of Moon River, which is one of my favorite songs. And um, we talked, and I said, well, why don't you come on the program? You know, I just, uh, it sounds great. Uh, and, of course, you know, I wasn't thinking, I, I didn't know if you were trans or what. You just, you know, I didn't, I had no idea. And then when I looked you up, I thought, oh, she's trans. Isn't that great? You know, so um, that made me even a little more excited about having you on the program. Not because you're trans necessarily, but because... It's it's important to talk about it, and I don't know how you feel about um, you know you've you've done a lot of education, and this is what's important because people don't understand the LGBTQ community. It's complex, you know. And what makes what is the difference between each of those? Everyone says, "Oh, it's gay," you know, <laughs> and that's just not true. And we're trying to to to, to sort of what they say unpack it. And I, I want you to help us unpack it tonight, mm-hmm. as well as play some wonderful music with Steve and uh, just have a, a great evening. Well, thank you. Um, was that a question? <laughs> no, it wasn't a question. It was a big, long dissertation. <laughs> I'm going to write my PhD on it. <laughs> but, but no, but, but just to help unpack that, please, Mandy. Um, the different facets of yeah, LGBT? Yeah, what's LGBTQ? For, I mean, for people who are confused, mm-hmm. you know, I mean... Well, maybe they could explain to me, because I get confused myself. Um, mm-hmm. They're adding more and more letters as we go along. But, you know, there's such diversity out there. We're learning now that there's so many people who are feeling different. Mm-hmm. or um, They want to be their own, th- their own person. Right. And there's a lot of that happening. And it's basically, well, the L is, is the lesbian, mm-hmm. um, the women. Um, uh, the B is the bisexuals, people who are attracted to both sexes. Mm-hmm. Um, the G is um, is gay, of course. They've been around the longest, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, not in the world. No, everyone's you know. been around well, all yes, exactly. all along. We, from every, the beginning of from time. the beginning of time. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So yes. the gays and um, and the, I mentioned the bias. Okay, and then the trans. The, the trans. Now the trans is broken into three, three or four groups as well. Right. Now, so it's not just T anymore. There's there's transsexual, the people who would like to be um, labeled as people who that's their sexuality is being trans. Yeah. Um, there's transgender, is someone who feels they were born the wrong gender and mm-hmm. they're now living as the opposite gender. Yes. Uh, there's people who are, que- the Q is for people who are generally queer. They don't want to really basically be put in any category. Okay. Because um, I was confused about that between queer and gay. 
Yeah. I'm, I'll be honest. Yeah. You know? And some gays call themselves queer and some exactly. queers call themselves gay. So, you, yeah, you should be confused. That's what I said. I get confused. And the only way to make it right is to basically ask someone, you know, just say, well, how do you identify? You know, identify. And that's the whole deal right now with what the Ontario government is trying to do is trying to find that that box that can be ticked off and mm. and you know uh, that the you know it says trans or whatever you know what do you, how how's that all going to work out you know you know I, it doesn't matter what the what they end up doing mm-hmm. not everyone is going to be happy anyway because no. that's just the way things are it's a, it's the way of the world at, at the moment and I'm not saying that's wrong either people. People have their right to believe in what they believe in, and they have mm-hmm. their right to live the way they want to live. Right. Um, they're not looking at it as paperwork. And no. that's how the government is looking at it. And do you I know, know what? I do understand that to a certain degree because they have to fill in certain boxes. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm saying. You know, that just, so unless it just gets do? to the point where there's no box at all, we don't have any other options um i suppose yeah yeah it's like the only time it matters for me is the way i always communicate to people is the only time it matters that people know that i'm transgender is if we are going to bed or you're my doctor right. other than that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it totally and doesn't it sh- matter and it shouldn't matter so no and 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 the thing is though but people need to help uh, it, to to and uh, understand it and um I keep, I actually watched this program with my my daughter, you know, Jazz, and I, I I thought that was really good, you know that I I don't know how you feel about that. Have you ever seen the, the program Jazz? No, I haven't. It's about a transgender adolescent who's you know going to go through the um you know the whole the whole operation and everything to to make the the, the change, and what she's looking for and how she identified as a very young child and how her parents are very supportive. How are your parents with you? Well, my, my father passed, so, um, mm, so, <clears throat> oh, so, well, you know, <laughs> it, it's so hard, you it, know, it, it, it always is. And you it never, yeah, it never, leaves never you. easy. Mm-hmm. Um, my mother is still alive and she is, um, a born again Christian. Mm-hmm. And, um, so it was a little difficult for her at first. Mm-hmm. Um, but, We've come to terms, and she's accepted it a lot more than I thought she ever would, Mm -hmm. uh, which is good. I'm one of the fortunate people that way. Not everyone has that luxury. No, I Um, know. But with her, it's like we've tried to explain it. I've explained it. My two sisters, my brother, we've all explained to her what the situation is. It was very puzzling for her. And you know, Joyce, this is what the thing is. If people have never met someone who is trans, they can't possibly understand it. And I don't blame them. I I cannot blame anybody for even judging or looking and going, wow, that's weird. You're right. But you think it's weird for you? It's weirder for me. Because I was the one that had to basically live it. Well, maybe my daughter explained to me, it's in the brain, you know. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, It's not something that you just think... I want to be trans or I want to be gay or I want to be a lesbian. Mm-hmm. It, it's something that is inside. Of course, some people say, oh, gay lifestyle is a choice. And then I think, <laughs> I don't think, I, I can't see that it's a choice. I think it's, it's inevitable mm-hmm. or it's not, you know. It's mm-hmm. like either or. I don't see any gray area, you know. No, there, there is, <laughs> it, there's certainly no choice. That, so I don't, I don't choice. understand that part. I really don't want to say, well, gay lifestyle is a choice, you know. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of women uh, don't, didn't like guys, so they turned to women. And I'm thinking, that doesn't just happen no. naturally. No, it's not. It's something that just happens. Um, exactly. And trans is the same thing. Being... Being trans, usually a lot of us have this, the, the same story, as in mm-hmm. we knew from the very beginning. Yes. We were surprised when we were little girls and somebody told us we were not. That must have been shocking. It is totally devastating. And then you have to live as something else. For some of us, it's a few years. Some of us, a handful of years. Some of us, it's many, many years. And some of us, mm-hmm. we never can. And in my case, so I had to live for a long period of time being somebody I was not and learning how to be a male. I was acting every single day of my life. And it was probably the biggest acting role ever with no awards yeah. attached. You know, but uh, that's the only way I can communicate it with people. It's like, it's not natural. We don't feel natural. Well, it would be like me. Being born, you know, uh, 
a heterosexual female, mm-hmm. but having my my parents dress me in boys' clothes and say, mm-hmm. "No, you're a boy." Mm-hmm. And and I'm saying no, and I'm a no girl. You, and no, you it, have to have sex with girls. Yeah, it, it absolutely it's, doesn't mm-hmm. have anything to do with genitalia. It's mm-hmm. it's what who you are, mm-hmm. and uh, who you identify as, and it would be like that would be devastating. Well, who would do that to a child, mm-hmm. right? So now we're trying to sort of I'm going to use the word straighten it out. <laughs> <laughs> The pun. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but really, it is like straightening the whole thing, like shaking out the carpet and trying mm-hmm. to find out what the heck's going on. It's kind of, uh, you know. Well, you know, Joyce, a lot of it is fear. And again, I can't blame people for being yeah. afraid of something they don't know and don't understand. And from whatever they're seeing out there, whether it's on TV or whatever else, and then they see something that's really not um, replicating who we are as, as a group of people. And they're looking at it going, wow, they're freaks, or wow, they're this, or wow, how can they feel that way? This doesn't exist. It's like it has always existed. Mm-hmm. We have had to hide because we would be killed. Oh, no, things are going moving so fast, so quickly. You know, we had the, uh, in the 60s, we had like a revolution, basically, which changed what happened before. And we're going through another one again. Mm-hmm. You know, what that happened in the 60s was one thing. Now what's happening in, you know, the 21st century and in, in this particularly in, in this decade, you know, there were 2017 already. My goodness, you know, we're almost at 2020. It's like the roaring 20s. <laughs> you know, <laughs> do, boop, boop, do. But, but no, but you know what I mean? It's like we're going through another technological revolution, sexual revolution, which wasn't like the 60s one. A little bit, but not the same. It's not free love. It's about it's about so many other issues. Uh uh, people politically correct. They got the alt right, the alt left. You got the boo boo. You got the mm-hmm. the Black Lives Matter people. You got this mm-hmm. one. You got that one. You got all these, and people are just inundated by all this stuff. It's moving too fast, and people can't disseminate. We're going to go to break. Okay. As it's nine fifteen here okay. at C H H A sixteen ten a.m. We must go to commercial, but when we come back, we're going to have more conversation, and we're going to have a song next. Uh, get get this music rolling. <laughs> Yeah, it's so much to talk about, and the hour does go fast, so we'll be right back after this. You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. A drink of water. And we're back here and drink water, and we didn't really even go anywhere, did we, Mandy? Good Handy is here with me in studio with her her wonderful guitarist, Steve John Dale. So, yeah, we're, we're still here, and we're still talking, and we're going to be rocking in a minute. Yes, I yeah. am. <laughs> How are you? I'm, uh, well, there you are. <laughs> yes, I'm still here. I didn't fall asleep. I know. You're, I didn't think so, you know. <laughs> I think you're waiting for some uh, really sharp be do kind of questioning coming at you. Don't expect that from me. We're having a conversation. Oh, that, no, that's okay. I wasn't expecting anything. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm kibitzing with you. You know what? Here, I just invite people to have a talk, you know. I like, I like, I like chatting. I like to talk a lot. And you have some wonderful things to say, Mandy. And uh, so we were talking about things going really, really fast here in society, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everywhere. And it's confusing for people when you throw every, all these things into the mix. And plus, you, you, you throw in terrorism, you throw in wars, you throw in uh, nuclear threats. from you, All of this stuff, it's almost too much to take. And we were actually talking a little bit about that in, before we came on, mm-hmm. about how much people have to handle yeah. And kids. Kids especially. You want to yeah. share what you talked about in, uh, you know, just before the yeah, program? Yeah, I, I was talking about the fact that kids are being exposed to so much um, now. And I, 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 that concerns me, mm-hmm. even though I don't have children, but I do have ne- nephews and nieces. Sure. And it's, it's disturbing to me that they have such access to so mm-hmm. much that's going on right now. Yeah. And I know that there's a lot of responsible parents out there that are not letting that happen. Mm-hmm. But they can still see or communicate somehow without the protection of their parents at times. So they know what's going on. And how are they going to deal with that and process that later as they mature? Mm-hmm. What kind of young people will they end up being? And that is a concern for me Absolutely. Um, when it comes to that. And the other, to get back to the transgender yes. thing, even yes. though I know that's not what the whole focus is on, but that's no, but what it's I know it's best. all part of it, you know. It's part yeah. of it. Understand the, the confusion. Yeah. Well, well, I find a, a lot of the fear again to get back to that is like because people are afraid of something they don't understand. Yes, and I think a lot of parents it's not even just fear; it's concern. Parents are concerned that their child might feel 
trans mm -hmm. or might feel homosexual or gay or like lesbians, whatever the case. And they're worried for that because they don't know how to deal with it. Yeah, what do they do? This is the thing, though. And is it just it, a passing phase? Is it a tomboy thing? Exactly. Or is it a, you know, what is it really? But you know you what know, the problem or, is, Joy? The problem is they, are, they, want, they want to understand how their children are feeling, mm -hmm. but they don't want that talked about. So you can't win. Once you go, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want my kids to hear about it. I don't want to know anything about it then the child is the one suffering, not the parent. Oh, yes, absolutely. And I know as a child who went through that, mm -hmm. how I felt so alone, I felt so picked on, and I, I just felt like I didn't belong anywhere. And if my parents had been educated yes. more, of course, they wouldn't have been back then because I'm older, but I'm talking about if they had been at some had the choice, which they do now, yes, they do. to be educated on it, then it would help the child. And it's not about the, the, the scared adult right now. It's about the terrified child. Yes, it is. And so my concern is not just the gender, like I was saying. It's also mm -hmm. the concern is the way the world is moving. And the ch these children, if you're concerned about your children... I think the least concern should be what gender they want to be or what sexuality they're going to end up being and how is their life going to be with everything that's going on in the world right now. Yeah. Well, I have a friend who's a pediatrician, and I was talking to her about this, and she says she has three patients right now under seven years of age who are, who are parents that brought their children to the pediatrician, and they've been assessed, and she's dealing with this. She's helping them, you know? And I think just take your child to a pediatrician and find out. Mm -hmm. Ask. Mm -hmm. Ask a medical doctor. Why yeah. not? Don't be afraid. Yeah. And at least the child knows that you're doing something and that, you know, it's, no least, matter so which, it's a good yes. start. It's a no good matter start. which direction they end up going in, they don't feel bad about themselves. Yeah. And that's what the whole thing is. And the thing is, it could just be, like you mentioned earlier, it could yeah. just be a phase. Could be, but For me, don't it know. wasn't. For a lot of people, it wasn't. It's no. like, but yes, you're right. It could be a phase that their child is going through. Yeah. And I've had people bring that up and go, oh, my son likes to dress in little girl's clothes, and, and he's this, that. Now, it, the best thing to do is just let them do what they're doing. It could be a phase, and they could move on. Exactly. And, and to support the child in whatever they're doing mm -hmm. and, and enjoy it. You know, it, my, my daughter never wanted to play with dolls. That, mm. isn't, that didn't mean that she mm. was necessarily this way or that way or mm -hmm. whatever. It was just that that was her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my son, my son was a gushy guy, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's just the way it is. Um, I would I would like to oh, I want to get some music in <laughs> <Okay>. music because <laughs> Mandy I love you it, you're you're wonderful and uh, great performer and you were the first uh, trans woman vocalist to be accepted into the Toronto yeah, Jazz Festival was, 2016 was, I know it was very exciting yeah. and, but you know what that that should even be like a you know. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. But unfortunately, it has to be, and that's what's it's a double edged sword here because. It takes those kind of first, <clears throat> first, it was the first for people to recognize, yeah. acknowledge, and know we exist. And it's that, like Rosa Parks, you know, not wanting to get up off the <laughs> seat. No, but you know, it's like, that's yeah. the first black woman who said... Exactly. Yeah. It's, yes. it's like this kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So you're a first. This is good. We'll have to make... Yeah, we're going to sing a song. You're going to sing a song. What are you <laughs> going to sing for I'll us? Sing I'm going to sing a song called I Believe. It, it's, um, it's a very old song mm -hmm. um it was written by um it was originally recorded uh by the bachelors which is um a male irish group Ooh. and it was a song that my father used to really like singing all the time oh, and so it's kind of it's a beautiful part for me and some of the words i, I relate to some of the words as well so it, there's a lot combined in this song that, that brings out you know, my feelings in it. Okay, so we've got uh, Mandy Goodhandy and Steve John Dale accompanying mm -hmm. her. Okay, go ahead. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night a candle glows. I believe for everyone 
who goes astray, someone will come to show the way. I believe, I believe, I believe above the storm, the smallest prayer can still be heard. I believe that someone in the great somewhere hears every word. Every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky then I know why I believe. Every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky then I know why I believe I believe and I believe that was very, Steve very Dale. beautiful. Yeah. And Steve John Dale, yeah. And and uh, so so happy that you're both able to come into the studio tonight. Glad you made it here, Steve. That's great. <laughs> Good to be here. It's wonderful to have you here. And uh, we're going to be going to break in about a minute and a half. So, um, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. I was just, I want no, to mention that. Hey, go ahead. This is the first time that Steve, uh, Steve John Dale and I have actually work together here so this is great we just had a rehearsal last night and he yeah. he's amazing isn't he amazing uh, i was going to say because i was going to mention it's the first time you played together but wow you guys are great together it sounded wonderful and uh i know our listeners are enjoying it we love live music here at chha 16 10 a.m where we're promoting local artists especially that's our um I think 75% uh, local Canadian cal- talent. So, uh, right. And you are both so incredibly talented. So we're going to come back. Um, when we come back from break, Mandy, um, I'd like to... Yeah, by the way, have you, have you ever been told you have kind of a Mae West vibe? I just, <laughs> I just love your look. <laughs> you know. No, come I on. I haven't been compared with her yet. But <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> You gotta look. You gotta look some of the. Oh, and I was thinking. You know that song, "My Old Flame." Have you ever heard it? No. Mae West no, sings that. You would no. sing that beautifully. Ah, uh-huh. well, thank it's you. Like, One more my suggestion. My old flame. I can't even think of his name. Beautiful song for you. Mm-hmm. I really think so. Oh, come up and see me sometime. When I got nothing okay, on but the radio. radio yeah. <laughs> Yeah, please send that to me. I would, I would love to try it. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you do know me well, so there you I, are. I know of me. I just didn't know that song. Yeah, that was one of her. That was one of her. She was the one. The way she sang was actually she would tell a story as well. Mm-hmm. And when you sing, I feel you're right into the lyrics and and into the into the story. And you're a wonderful storyteller as well. Well, thank you. Otherwise, there's no point. This isn't that what songs are. Or That's why right. Barbara Streisand said that herself. Mm-hmm. You know, she said just. Feel the words. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're going to feel some commercials right now. It's 928. Okay. We're going to go out to break and come back with more Mandy Good Handy and some Steve John Dale as well. So we'll be right back after this. You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. A drink of water. It's 929 here at CHHA 1610 AM. If you are just tuning in, I'm in a studio here with Mandy Goodhandy, also known as Amanda Taylor, and we've been talking about lots of things. Uh, she is Canada's first trans woman stand-up comedian and uh, wonderful vocalist, and uh, she's in studio here with guitarist Steve John Dale. So we've got music, and we've got talk, and uh, how about a little bit of comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Something for everyone, a comedy tonight. <laughs> That's always the hardest thing that a comedy it gets if somebody says well tell me a joke tell me a, yeah why aren't you funny why is he funny he's not funny <laughs> <laughs> that 
that wasn't yeah. funny. <laughs> exactly. It's like, you know, there's demands on you when it comes to that point. That's when you tell well, people course. you're a comic. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, I find you funny. How's that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> funny you should ask. <laughs> exactly. It's like, okay, I'll tell you a joke. No, but just talking about um, comedy because... How you know because um, comedy is a very sophisticated art form, you know, and uh, so how do you use yours? <laughs> <laughs> I have been on YouTube, so there were some <laughs> things I couldn't. You know, no, it's a family <laughs> radio show, so you know, yeah. there's some things. I mean, you know, I you want to go on YouTube, go Mandy Good Handy, yeah. <laughs> and you will you will have a laugh a minute or a second. But um, certainly, um, you know. You you do stand up. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the, the, you sit down too. I notice. I have done that. I have yeah. done that many times. <laughs> Sometimes I laid down. It's a, but <laughs> the thing is, with, when it comes to comedy, it's like we're going to remember we're in nightclubs here. You know, you're in a nightclub. Yeah. And so, of course, your comedy can be a little more. You know, it's like you know some language or whatever. Of course, yeah. And Lenny subjects. Bruce started it all. Well, Poor this, guy. Exactly. My gosh, what a life he had. And the thing had. is, like the clean, the clean comic and the clean routines. If I was going to do one, would be like corporate. Uh, you know, certainly not yeah. children's. Um, parties but i do joke about that and i say if you want to book me at your children's party it's like (laughs) but um the the thing is about comedy i bet you'd be great (laughs) i love kids and i would adapt my comedy to them of course i would you know i I would you adapt a, a good comedian is someone who adapts to the audience and even if it's the audience that night Yes. If you you have to pick up on what's working and what isn't, and you have to do it quickly, mm-hmm. and then you adapt to that audience and you give them the stuff you think they're going to enjoy. Right. A lot of comics will spin that around, going, "No, it's the audience's fault." But no, it's not the audience's fault because they're paying to see you, yeah. not the other way around. You mm-hmm. or you owe them comedy. They don't owe you applause or laughter. Nothing. That's also with singing, with anything, because you have mm-hmm. to, you know, if you're, you've got your set list all figured out or your comedy routine figured out, and you say, I'm just, like you said, just doing it, mm-hmm. it and, and your audience is just sitting there like, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and, you, you know, maybe yes. something's wrong. Maybe it wants something yeah. faster, slower, funnier, or different, mm-hmm. or, you know. Yeah, if it don't fit, don't force it. And you, and you, can't, you, mm-hmm. can, you can't force an audience to appreciate your style of comedy and that doesn't mean that you're not good that just means you're not good that night for that crowd exactly and and that's okay you cannot have an ego and and run around in this industry and feel that people owe you like i said they don't owe you anything no and um if well then you're on the wrong side of the stage you know mm -hmm. i mean we owe the audience every as performers we owe Mm -hmm. them a good show they're paying for that a lot of times i mean mind you your comedy club is free isn't it on friday night it is free yes um so i can't i can talk a little bit about that because it's free the friday the friday night comedy show actually is five dollars to get in okay it's not my show it's another promoter okay but what is my i have an open mic that um it's not an open mic but it's it's a comedy extravaganza but i both Okay. over 30 comics and it's a monthly uh show but that is free oh that is free and when yeah. the, okay let's we can say when that one is because we can talk about the free show okay the next one is september 9th okay and it is free and then when i say that it's like they're still paying even though they're not paying to get in joyce they're buying something they're supporting the venue I still owe them something. Of course. You know, and it's so that's how it always works. The audience is what keeps us open. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, I, 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 I you have a, a Spanish uh, contingency too to the comedy. Oh, we do. Don't you? We, we have Spanish shows. We have Spanish um, speaking comedy shows. Um, and they're incredible. Do, are they uh, on a particular night? Like that it's your Spanish night or like your Latin <laughs> night or no, something? No, or? It's, um, they're usually the, 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 the fourth Thursday of every month. And the next one is the 31st of August. Okay. Um, well, that would be that's something to, to look forward to. Oh, it's exciting! You so, know, if we have any Latin com, any Spanish speaking comics, they can yeah. get yeah, they can come and check it out and, and, and talk out. to the host and, and you know let them know that you're a comedian and we we welcome that. Definitely come by and let us know that you you want to get on the funny there. You know, that would be great. Yeah. That would be great. So, comedy. Okay, well, let's have you know, let's have another song. 
<laughs> okay. Let's have another song. You okay. know, I'm not going to make you tell a joke or do a routine <laughs> no. because, you know. I mean, a lot of the times that the comedy is just you're talking and you're telling a story. So it's it's exactly. not necessarily one-liners or jokes. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So. It's a whole, and building that rapport with the audience, like you said, you know, and, and yeah. yeah. So yeah. What, what's next on your list? Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing a song from Brigadoon. Oh, Brigadoon. Hi. Hi. And, um, Me mother's wedding day. <laughs> and up your kilt. Oh. It was uh, <laughs> right up your kilt. I know. Okay. <laughs> it, was, it was a musical that I was in um, a while back when I was doing professional theater. I was in a show. show. It was a beautiful show, mm-hmm. beautiful music. And, and this was one of my favorite songs from the show, but it wasn't me that sang the song in the show. So I thought I would teach them a lesson and go, well, you didn't let me sing this song on your show, so I'm going to do it on mine. It's not on me mother. It's not me mother's wedding day. It was, no, if you think oh, you're no. wedding day. <laughs> it wasn't that. That was cute. That, that's that, a great. Is that Meg? Hi, Meg. She was, oh, she was Hi, a, Meg. a funny character. Okay, well, we, well, we'll hear your song. We love it. Oh, this is beautiful. What a day this has been What a rare mood I'm in Why it's almost like being in love There's a smile on my face For the whole human race Why it's almost like being in love The music of life seems to be Like a bell that is ringing for me And from the way that I feel When that bell starts to peal I'd swear I was falling I'd swear I was falling It's almost like being in love Steve Jumpdale of life seems to be like a bell that is ringing for me and from the way that I feel when that bell starts to heal I would swear I am falling I'd swear I am falling it's almost like being That's beautiful, beautifully sung, beautiful delivery, both of you. Wow, that's Mandy John. <laughs> I was going to say Mandy John, Mandy. I'm, so, I'm morphing you guys together because, Steve, you got Steve John Dale and you got Mandy Good Handy. I mean, my goodness, how how can a host survive? <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Really oh, yeah, yeah, right. It just, you know, yeah, she's a little weird. That's why I'm a little weird. <laughs> anyway, I think... We're gonna have another song, I think, in just in just a minute. But um, what kinds of you, you you've sung at the Jazz Bistro, you you did the, the Jazz Festival, and mm-hmm. um, and and what I mean, what do you oh, what do you enjoy more, comedy or singing? But um, you know, probably yeah. ego. But it's a different thing. It's a whole mm-hmm. different feel. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, you're absolutely right. And entertaining in, gen- in general can be a wonderful thing. Um, the comedy is more along the lines of um, educating in an amusing way. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people out there who have seen, observed, or met transgender people, mm-hmm. we we want to get a message out there. And some of some of us are are angry, and I don't blame them. Mm-hmm. Some of us want to deliver in a different way, and we all do it in different ways. Because I do not speak for all transgender people. Believe me. No. And I would even attempt. But my style when it comes to educating and putting the word out about trans is my comedy. Mm -hmm. I go on stage and I tell a couple of little things, humorous things about being a transgender woman and Mm -hmm. how I relate and people relate to me in an amusing way. 
And then people learn from that, even though they're being entertained at the same time. Well, th- I, I just had an epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave the studio. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's good. Everything's good. <laughs> no, when you do your comedy, you're doing it as a trans woman. Mm-hmm. As as a tra- for the, and then when you do your jazz, you're all, and that's why I, when I approached you to mm-hmm. come on the program, I was just I was approaching you as a really cool person who I loved your voice. And I thought just come on the program and we'll mm-hmm. we'll 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 sing, you know, have you sing and uh, tell your story, which I didn't know what your story was, but I I saw this wonderful gal up on stage singing and I, I, I was entranced so I thought wow that's great not entranced like I understand. <laughs> that's interesting yeah. though it's an interesting <laughs> word being entranced but <laughs> but there you go so uh, how about taking it but you know what I'm saying it's like you know I you appreciate are your, that Joyce you know? thank you um, and, and that's a great point and people need to know about that point is mm-hmm. when I'm up there doing comedy and I'm talking about being trans that's one thing it's another thing living my life, and that's not my label. That's not exactly. who I am. I know. And so I want to thank you for that. I mean, you were watching me as an entertainer singing a song. It had nothing to do with my lifestyle. Not or like you I were was. a joy, a pure joy. Well, <laughs> I thought you were. I said, boy, this, she's got so much wonderful energy, this lady. You know, I love her. Because I, en- I, I enjoy what I do. Mm-hmm. I, I really do enjoy. And, and again, I have the luxury of being older. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of trans people don't have that yet where they're really comfortable in their own skin. Yeah. So they have to go through two skins almost. It's like, first of all, being comfortable in your own skin as a human being mm-hmm. is hard enough mm-hmm. when you're growing up and going through puberty. Uh, to, to live in, in a skin that you're not comfortable in to begin with because you're doing the wrong gender is another thing. And then when you finally release yourself and you're able to live as a gender you've always felt comfortable with. Yeah. That's, an, that's another situation. And a lot of people need to understand that about trans people is what they have to go through. It's not just putting on a dress. I know. that that's a, A guy can put on a dress and go out and mm-hmm. come back and put his suit on and go to business. That's yes. a different thing. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. Yeah, <laughs> entirely. A, a different matter. Well, um, yeah. Well, I was actually, I was on a bus several years ago, and I was, someone asked me if I was trans. Okay. So, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. because I'm tall, I'm five foot nine and a, and a half. And, you know, I'm, I, you know, I, I, they, for some reason, they thought mm-hmm. I was, I, I, I thought, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, but. It's, I don't know what's more interesting, that they thought you were trans or they actually asked you if you were trans. I mean. They thought I was trans. They, 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 they said, well, it was, it, they didn't say it to me. They said it to each other. Oh. Oh, that's a man. Okay, so they you said, weren't. Okay. They looked at me and they said, "That's a man. That's really a man. That's not oh. a woman. That's a man." And I was just very like femme. I was just like you, you know. So well, I guess there you go. Yeah, yeah you, you can't react or overreact. And I didn't. I just like thought. Yeah. I just sat there and thought, "That's interesting." Mm. <laughs> you know, it's one more thing you could pull out of your hat. You know, there, there you, there go. you go. Like <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> hat would that be? I the one with the know. rabbit or the <laughs> trans? Well, it depends <laughs> on what you're carting around. I don't. <laughs> just, my, there's a lot of things I say in my routine, but I don't want to bring. I'm not uh, sure what I can say, so I'm not going to. No, nothing um, like you think. <laughs> <laughs> that I won't say anything. There, there but, you go. We're going but to... there is jokes about that. There is, there is. I bring up situations exactly like what you're talking about. It's like in how I deal with it in, in a comedic way. Yeah. And you know, and then people kind of go, "Oh, you know what? She's not upset. She doesn't get mad. She's not yelling at me. She's yeah. educating me." It's perception. You know? mm-hmm. Well, I was, I was just, before we go to break. <laughs> it's a personal story, but my mother was moving out west, and I stayed overnight at her place. This is down at Danforth and Broadview, and I didn't have a place to sleep because everything was packed. I slept in my clothes. I didn't wash my face for makeup and you know the new york cafe is right there so i'll just go out at six o'clock in the morning for breakfast before they come in to take her to the airport and i looked a mess i was sitting there the waitress wouldn't wouldn't serve me and a bunch of firefighters and police officers came in i guess for their off shift uh, breakfast and they started talking look at her she's still got her makeup on yeah she looks like yeah, she's a prostitute. So I've been, I've been, I've been, <laughs> I've been identified as a prostitute and as a trans. And you know, like it's, it's. It, and I sat there and I thought, oh, that's interesting. And that's why the waitress hasn't been, or the server oh. has not been serving me. I want to congratulate you for that. Mm-hmm. 
the fact that you were <laughs> mistaken for both of those <laughs> things because you know what? It's not <laughs> You should be proud of anything you're identified as. I'm not. I was like, I what the heck? I can't be prejudiced. <laughs> and we're going to break. Go to break. Nine forty-five. You still got a couple of songs you're going to sing for us. I so do we're going to do want. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to do it right after break. We're going to have some music right after these messages uh, with Mandy Goodhandy and. Uh, Steve John Dale <laughs> here at CHHA 1610 AM. So we'll be right back after this. You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas 1610 AM. A drink of water. It's 19 degrees at 947 here at CHHA 1610 AM. And it looks like uh, tomorrow it's actually going to go up to 23 degrees, a little bit of uh, sun and cloud there. And uh, we might even hit 25 on Wednesday. And uh, But we're getting into that transitional weather. <laughs> I mean, I used the word. I had to do it. Oh, I, please do. Uh, no, but I wasn't even <laughs> thinking about doing that. I mean, uh, we just have to transcend all of this. So, well, this is what I mean. <laughs> and we have fun with it, you know. And that's the thing. We're going to have fun with it. Yeah. Transgender people don't. Don't own the word trans, just so you know. That's so you right. can use it in any other word you want. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So you have some a couple more songs. Don't I was going to ask you, you I, if if you want, I can just do the one the one song that um, at the end there. Well, because this, I don't want to cut off our conversation. Our conversation is going really well. I, if you got more to say, I know you must have. We could talk for hours. I think. Well, I I it dep- I guess it depends on. Uh, you know the people listen. I just feel bad that I don't speak Spanish. Porque you know, no. I really do because yeah. it's such a beautiful language. For it is. Off. Learn a song in Spanish. That's how I started. Is that right? Maybe I should. Do I that. learned Veinte yeah. Años, mm-hmm. and you know, and and just learn. This. That's the best way to learn languages, especially when you're a singer. Learn a song. Yeah. That's, yeah. A good, that's a good idea. Just learn, learn a nice song like I, uh, I Perfidia was, or something. It's a beautiful I, song. <laughs> I was just too busy learning all the trans words, you know, and that took a long time. <laughs> there you go. You know, <laughs> transport and transvision and trans everything. That's, that's right. What, that's right. That's right. There's a lot to remember. You there know, is. Otherwise, I will have to leave the club. Um, well, so, yeah. But you'll I, have to transfer. I, you know, to somewhere else. I See guess how so. you're picking yeah. up on that? <laughs> there you go. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are getting our comedy in there somehow. Is. I we're, know. It's we're like, having fun. I told you we'd have fun, and the it, hour it is, would go fast. It is fun. Isn't it you know, something? <laughs> I, I know something that I have. A, I have a little thing I can, a little, a little uh, story that's humorous that, that okay. is not dirty. There you go. So I think I can share this with you because it's one of the things a lot of people ask about. Uh, first of all, transgender people, that's not a sexuality. And I no. know you know that, Joyce, but a lot of people don't. They just assume if you're a trans woman, then you are into men. And that's not always the case. Everyone I was confused for a while. I didn't know them. that. I was confused. My yeah. daughter sorted me out. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Because a lot of people look at transgender women as drag queens or gay boys dressed up. Mm-hmm. And it's going to take them a long time to get that out of their head. So yep. they just assume that we are all into men. And yes, some of us are, and some of us are into women. But that's not really the point. Mm-hmm. Okay, but what happens is people are always saying to me, when, after my comedy show, a lot of people ask questions. And I'm okay. I'm open to questions. And the, one of the questions I get all the time is, what type of men are interested in trans women? You know, and it's like, okay, uh, what kind of men are interested in any type of woman, first of all? But they say, well, how do you, do you tell people if they come and pick you up? Well, first of all, when I go out to a bar and if, if a gentleman hits on me, I don't have to tell him. No. I'm just not going with him anyway. So what's the point? Exactly. You're not, you know. See what I mean? People just assume. They, they that kind you, of look and they, go, oh. That so you're so promiscuous. You're exactly. going to be running with every guy. That comes yeah. So some like, guy's coming up and he's picking me up. And it's like, well, how do you handle it? It's simple. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just having a drink with my friends. Exactly. You know, but this is what happens when a, a guy does this. And they say, well, what kind of a man are, going to, are they going to have a relationship with you? Aren't they going to be ashamed? Aren't they going to be this? And it's like, and I'm going, well, yeah, you know, at this point, it might be difficult for a man to explain to his family and his friends and everything else. Um, so we have to end up with almost what I would call unpopular orphans, which is people that have no friends and no family. That's why you're, we're friends. And that, well, there you are. <laughs> I'm such an unpopular so, orphan. And I, and I can certainly understand that the, the people are a little 
uncomfortable yeah, about it. That's the problem. But with me, you know, Joyce, it's like, why would I be dating a man that was ashamed? Anyone. It doesn't matter who. You know, I mean, I, I, I have I have a mental illness. I, 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 I was talking about this on air before. Mm-hmm. And uh, 42% of the population I found out last week don't want to spend time with me. So I'm also going to get those orphans, you know. And meanwhile, they're the ones that probably have the biggest mental problems, and you're the one that's dealing with it. There's a difference. I know. And the same thing with you. You're dealing with it. With, mm-hmm. And so you would know how to take. So, yeah, that is that is something. They have so the, the story problem. the story yeah. is because we're getting down we're to getting down to the crunch here. Okay, <laughs> I have a song if you want me to do a song. I'd love you to do a song. Okay, I'm going to do this song because it's kind of like, I thought it would be a good ending song. But of course, we can still talk. Of course, of course, of course. Yes, Um, please please sing. But it's a song that was from um, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. And no, it's not Diamonds, a girl's best friend. But it's the song that uh, that Marilyn was singing to her boyfriend as they were leaving on um, on the ship. Oh, okay. And they were, you know, I have to leave, goodbye, goodbye. So I thought this would be appropriate to send out to your listeners here that, you know, I'll be leaving soon, and but I'll be thinking about all of you. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, I think that's great, because it's already uh, 9.52.47, so, uh, yeah, go ahead. Bye, bye, baby, remember... You're my baby when they give you the eye. Although I know that you care, won't you write and declare? Although on the loose you are still on the square. I'll be gloomy, so send those rainbows to me, and my trouble will fly, though you'll be gone for a while, I know that I'll be smiling. With my baby by and by With my baby by and by here in a drink of water but that was Mandy Good Handy and Steve John Dale on guitar singing Bye Bye Baby. I love that song. Well, we're at the end of our show so uh, thank you so much uh, so so much for um, for joining us and uh, if there's any way that people want to, can they can they contact you at all if they want to have questions if there's somebody or can they where can they where can they go? A pediatrician for the young kids yeah, they and could, yeah, they could, um, 
I have a website, um, mandygoodhandy.com. Okay. Or uh, they can they can call the 120 Diner anytime they want and, and ask for me or ask my business partner how to get a hold of me. And it's Todd, yeah. I'd be happy to speak with them. Okay. Well, that's wonderful to have that. It's important to be available to people. Yeah. Because uh, we've got this conversation. And of course, there will be a podcast. We know people are listening all over the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are uh, the first in music here in the community. And we've had some wonderful music here tonight with you and Steve. And thank you so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, you, we, um, we'll be back next week. It's going to be Labor Day, so I'm going to be playing a lot of great music again. So thank you again, Mandy, for joining us. And uh, we're going to sign off now. We're out. Thank you so much. Ah.